Hi, I'm Katie Derbyshire. I'm reading from World Apart by Julia Frank, published by Fischer Verlag. Born in East Berlin, I had lived in West Berlin's Marine Fedda refugee camp with my mother and three sisters for almost nine months as a child, from October 1978 to the summer of 1979. The West German state of Schleswig-Holstein admitted us as a hardship case, and our mother found an old brick farmhouse in a rundown village on the North Sea Baltic Sea Canal, with a thatched roof, a large, almost lightless threshing floor at its centre, and an apparently never-ending, unfenced garden bordering on paddocks down to the canal. Anna wanted to drop out there and make a home for herself. Supported by benefits, she wanted to start a new life in freedom with her daughters. No one knew her in West Germany. Actresses were ten a penny. The labour exchange in the camp had told her to her face that no one was waiting for her here in the West. There was no chance of acting work for a 35-year-old woman, single, with four children from different fathers, who hadn't worked for several years. Around the time of her first application to leave the GDR, she'd stopped working at the Hans Otto Theater in Potsdam, intending to study stage design. Over the years of repeated summonses and rejections of her exit application, she'd been allocated jobs as a dubbing artist, a postwoman and a graveyard gardener. The combination of her CV and her social situation rendered her unqualified for the West German labour market. She'd been classified as a welfare case. Her training at the renowned Ernst Busch Acting School, her many years at various theatres and her roles in East German films were not even enough to get her retrained, at least until the wall came down. We kept various animals, a sheep, a goat, a pig, a goose, a rabbit, a dog and a cat. At first they were all female, apart from my twin sister's dog. None of them was to be alone for long, they were all to multiply. We dug vegetable beds beneath the knotty fruit trees and set up cold frames. We made jam, pressed juice out of elderberries, baked bread for our, from our own hand-milled grain, milked the goats and made our own cheese. The only thing we children didn't want to eat, other than our mother's nettle soup, was the lambs and piglets soon to be born. In the summer we picked sorrel, yarrow and dandelion leaves from the fields. Who needed watery supermarket lettuce? None of us used recipes from books. We taught ourselves to cook any way we liked. Our apple cakes and oat cookies, Christmas biscuits and blueberry tarts were improvised. We got up alone in the morning, made ourselves tea, and in the winter we children shoveled the snow and ice from the pavement before dawn. We walked the five kilometres to the Steiner School on the other side of the canal, sticking our thumbs out in the cold when we reached the ferry in the hope that someone might take pity and have space for us twins in their car. I remember the pain and the burning in my toes as they gradually thawed out under my desk during the day's first lesson. Damp socks in wet leather shoes. The bus was too expensive. When the snow melted in spring, we cycled to school on our patched up bikes, fixing a puncture, changing brake pads and replacing the cable between a dynamo and a lamp, changing a chain, repairing a bottom bracket and replacing the loose ball bearings, greasing parts, there was little we couldn't do ourselves. There was a boy, Shelsky, who would sometimes lie in wait for us at the hill by the ferry. We'd stand on the pedals to climb the hill. Our bikes had no gears, they were heavy. He positioned his bike straight across the road. The moment we braked in front of him and tipped sideways, he grabbed so hard at our handlebars that our bikes crashed to the ground. He showered us with insults and spat in our faces. More than once. He spat as much as he could while he held first one and then the other of us down beside our bikes on the ground. Never before had someone spat in my face. There was no reason to do so. He just didn't like us. He was three years older and a head taller. You would have liked to forget him. Something of that smell sticks to you. You smell like it days and years later.